We take you to Kaduna. Perhaps one horrified state governor now is Kaduna State's Malam Nasser Erufai. The 62-year-old quantity surveyor cum politician has expressed concern over the presence of the dreaded Boko Haram and the Ansaru terrorists in two local government areas of Birningwari and Giwa in the state. According to the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arunwa, no less than 360 persons have been killed between the first three months of the year, uh, uh, between January and March, if you, if you see what I mean. Now, the governor notes that with a curious development, the insecurity problem has moved from northwestern Nigeria to the north central. Danger is real, and fear of the unknown is a choice. But first, let's share this story with you. Led by Governor Nasu Erufai, the Kaduna Security Council meets every quarter to review strategies to tackle all forms of security threats ravaging the state. Heads of security agencies and traditional leaders who make up the council gathered on Thursday to receive the security report for the first quarter. In the first quarter, we had a lot of issues in Kateri, Bishini, uh, Regional General uh, Area, and again around the Kachia district. We have a total of 1,389, uh, 350 males, sorry, there yeah, are 420 females, then 79 minors. Of great concern to the governor is the influx of Ansaro and Boko Haram terrorists into the state and their partnership with bandits. The first great concern is the emergence of Boko Haram terrorist entity, as well as the activities of Ansar, particularly in Birnambari and Chikundu of the government. I think this is an area we should be very concerned about. And this is why we've been making the point that the problem of insecurity now has moved from the northeast to the northwest. The situation in the northwest is far more serious could be potentially more dangerous than we've ever had in the North East. And uh, we would like the military and security agencies to take notice of this before it goes out of control. The terrorists were making comments like the forests in Kaduna are even better than Sambisa, so they should all relocate here. The authorities are disturbed that terrorists are recruiting youths from vulnerable communities by luring them with gifts and cash. The governor now contemplates demolishing three communities along the Kaduna Abuja Highway, identified as a safe haven for terrorists and their informants. Is the continuous um, mention of Rijana, Katari, and Akilubu axis in all these crimes, particularly the uh, safety or lack of it of the Kaduna Abuja Road? We have been exploring what to do about these three settlements, whether to relocate them to near Kagarko, whether to clear the entire settlement. And I would like the Security Council to deliberate on this because it is very clear that there are higher level of informants and criminals in these locations. Because why is it that any time there is an attack or any form of kidnapping, on the Kaduna Abuja road, it happens around these three axes. The success was also achieved in counter terrorism operations with the killing of at least 101 terrorists by ground and airstrikes within the period under review. The Kaduna State Security Council has promised to improve human intelligence gathering and interagency collaboration towards achieving successful counter terrorism operations. Lupe Asom, TVC News. All right, many thanks, uh, Lupa. Uh, Emeka, uh, these are crazy times. These are times that will continue to try men's souls. I do remember that uh, Governor El Rufai said they had a means of listening to these uh, guys eavesdropping on whatever they did or said. Yeah, but that was not, uh, that was not enough. Uh, did he carry the locals along? Uh, he said now that the that they've identified an area, sort of maybe a circle, 
on axis, if you if you will, mm. where these um, most of activities, the where most of them operate from, and he now also blamed the locals, so drawing it in, and he has said, okay, that he's going to demolish settlements in that place, which is a doctrine in counterinsurgency, which is called draining the sea, draining the water. Draining, that is, you just swamp. empty it totally, whether of the insurgents or the local people, and then relocate the local people elsewhere. But how effective will that be? Because this is a long stretch of road. These people will just simply move from there to another place. There should be an all-encompassing strategy to end this insurgency. And what am I talking about? The security forces should be more serious. The IG goes to, uh, go, go, go to, uh, goes to visit the road and tells us that uh, nothing will happen again. He goes away and these people kidnap 22 people. What are we talking about? Why, why do you keep promising the people what you are not ready to do? And then you, you know, people rest on your assurances. They go out only to run into kidnappers. I, I think I, I, somewhere, somehow, some of these people are not really serious about what they tell us, what they try to convey to Nigeria. They are not serious about it. And I say with all sense of responsibility, they are not serious. Maybe even they don't even really care about what happens to the people. Okay, you have resumed uh, operations uh, by rail, rail operations. What, how have you fortified the rail? All you just said is that there won't be early morning and night, uh, night um, services. So is it that the insurgents, they disappear in the daytime and come back at night or in the early morning? But these people have got to be more intelligent than all of this. Yeah, JKB, you know, in security matters, security matters are not discussed in the open Precisely. place. Yeah. You know, so um, results are better than Don't, don't tell this. me. Show me. Yeah. I think, uh, of course, we know Mr. Rufai a long time. And I'm sure that he is of the opinion that his candor and openness is a virtue. That when he's a uh, of clear mind and it tells you what is happening, maybe that will make the thing go away. It doesn't work like that, like you said. There are things that are discussed, strategic security meetings <coughs> are not for the media. And it's not for us to know. All over the That's world, it. you only know after the facts. It's not for, I mean, guys will not tell you they are going after Osama. We only knew it happened after the facts. And we thought that this will be happening. Don't tell me what I'm going to do to that axis. We know the axis. It's about 20, 30 kilometers. It's not really that big. Yeah. But it's part of the isolated places that even the military had identified. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Do it. All we want is results. The reason why you have a job is to protect people, their lives and their property. That's all the constitution says. Yeah. That's the only job. Yeah. Don't grandstand. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Do it. It's only in Nigeria you see people who are given responsibility pass the buck to somebody else. Mm. In this case, you and I know that the most strategic place right now, based on the configuration of the Nigeria power game, is Abuja Kaduna. And if those close players are not safe, you know what is next. Mm. That they will not come in and go out from Kaduna will be a fallacy. Two years ago they came, he too he shouted, then they moved back. Because once you clear them in Sanfara, they will go to the next state. If, they, if you clear them in the next state, now they are, they are nested Primarily in Niger. So Niger. And you know that from Niger, you can strike anywhere within yeah. the 500 yeah. kilometers. Niger is the, the largest the state. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Niger is the equivalent of the southwest. That's minus it. Lagos. That's it. That's it's that it. big. And the entire so, southwest will fit into, into Niger. Emeka begs the question <coughs> of do we really want to defeat terrorism or do we think we can defeat it? No, no, I, I think um, I, I must give it to the military. They are really, they've, they've made a lot of successes in the Northeast against terrorists, against Boko Haram, ISWAP. But Sorry, why I asked you that is simply because of what happened two weeks back. Some three soldiers in Zamfara are known to have been caught 
conniving with the Boko Haram oh, it's and so a, it's, on. It's, 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 you know, it's, so, it's, so we are talking about fifth columnists here. These things, uh, sometimes you, 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 you shouldn't be surprised to talk about fifth uh, columnists because the, there are people who just don't care what becomes of a city. If, 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 the, if the entire system collapses, they just move away elsewhere. They don't care. So those people should as much as possible isolate such people. Let, let oh, them so, be... Sorry, the, who are these people who don't care? The terrorists? No, no, no. no. They are in the, the collaborators within the okay, security okay, services okay. and the civilian population. You hear that these terrorists are kidnapping people in other places. They are killing people. They are ravaging communities, killing women, children, and all of that. And you still have... Unchallenged. You still, you still feel comfortable... You, you, saw, you heard the story of the woman who was taking, who was taking food and um, bullets to, yeah, to the insurgents. That's now, this it. is a woman who is a mother, not even caring that the children of other people are still in the captivity of this terrorist. And, and yet still another who was taking fuel. Yeah, it was to, even, to the even, one was even negotiating intimate relations between her daughters and these insurgents. So you see... The, 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 the sociological aspects of this problem need to be looked into. There's widespread poverty in the land. So, in, so people generally will you know, now use it as an excuse to aid and abet hmm. terrorism, criminality. But government should move ahead of all these things. If Boko Haram and Iswap have moved, this is not the first time that it has been said. Yeah. A former inspector general of police said it a long time ago, maybe six, seven, eight years, said it that Ansaru, a, an offshoot of Boko Haram, had moved down to the North Central. Then it was in Kogise when there was an attack on an Air Force, Nigerian Air Force uh, column of, you know, a Nigerian Air Force column. Now, what has been done between then and now? Okay, the Tukano jets that have been brought in have been, by diplomatic agreement, restricted to the Northeast. Mm. So what it means is that you cannot use those same tucanos to deal with insurgents in these other places, in the north central. So why are we... The talk was about collateral damage. Well, you see, the damage that these criminals, these terrorists are doing to communities in the north central is really heartrending. So Nigeria should find a way, the Buhari administration should find a way to man, you know, to negotiate out of this enclosure, you know, this boxing into the northeast, so that the Tucanos can be deployed in the north central, and then you clear these people out of Niger. Yes, these, the armed forces have been doing a lot. I mean, some days ago, they recorded huge successes against these people. But, you see, the point is that some countries around Nigeria are failed states. For instance, right. look at Niger. Yeah. So a lot of their people, because of conflict, hunger, poverty, are white poverty, are they are dispersing, moving to Nigeria. Yeah. So terrorists see them easily. Then you okay. have a lot of street hey, children. Mika, we have a Macaulay waiting here in Lagos. Macaulay, good evening to you. Welcome. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, once again, the issue of terrorism and banditry is a, is a multi-dimensional issue. First and foremost, the poverty level in Nigeria, the government has to do something about it. Secondly, the fifth colonies, if they are all over the forty. Nigeria only has one of the best men in the world. When they go for operation outside Nigeria, they come back with Lore, even Nigeria police. Hmm. So then what is happening? When they come back home, what is happening? The government needs to put together a think <coughs> tank combining all the retired generals to come back and bring some of what is not happening in Nigeria. Mm. Talking about Kaduna, to be very honest with you, sometime last year there was one doctor at Kubaka that wrote about that, that, that road. If those four villages, if they did not do anything about those four villages, it's not a child play. They will continue to be kidnapping along that road. All right. All the information, all the informants, they are on that road. And again, about 
uh, your Okada oh. Okada is banned completely in Kano and the heaven doesn't fall. <coughs> so thank you, sir. All right, many, many thanks. GKB, but uh, um, Governor El Rufai's uh, outcry must be seen in a larger context of a country that's dealing with too many enemies yes. at the same time. Yeah. You know, so. so Usually, I, I, Mr. Rufai is a very put together guy. Yeah, but. but He's not think, afraid of taking their decisions. Good, but to think that Kaduna, which remains the old headquarters of the old northern region, is the epicenter, is uh, mind boggling. Yeah, but don't forget that it was also in Kaduna that the Air, the Air Force base was attacked within the heart okay. of Kaduna. Mm. So it's not really something that happened yesterday that would now cause us to lose sight of the reality that we are in the middle of a war. But the point you made is very cogent for two reasons. People all over the country have been saying, let us create more security buffers to help so, so that we can free the military. We can free some aspects of the police to face external threats. Because right now, the Nigerian military forces are overstretched. Everywhere. And oh, then yeah. new theaters of war are opening up every day. And it got to a point that they'll be so stressed that they will snap. That's the danger we face right now. And like I was saying, nobody can take it from Mr. Rufai his courage to do the needful. And for him to cry means that he has reached the end of his status. For him to cry out and say this getting out of hand. Because but we knew this will happen. Like Ebeka said, we've known this for almost 10 years, that they will spread, and they ultimately they will get down south. We know that. So in the next two, three, four years, if something is not done, we'll not be talking about this swap in Kaduna. We'll be talking about this swap in Portacot, in Lagos, mm. in Calabar. That's how bad this thing is coming. And they are, oh, they are, oh, and Saro terrorists. Because the way it's coming is the way it's showing. Right now, because if you cannot deal with them in the savannah, how are you going to deal with them in the forest? Yes. Hmm. No, look at the level of things that we are looking at. If the savannah could not provide you, which is open space, yeah. and you cannot do anything, imagine what will happen in the thick and, forest. And, and you know, you south. wonder, it begs the question of why aren't we going into gadgetry? The military have their ways. But like you said, they are limited in what they can use certain gadgets mm. for. This is a failure of intelligence. This is the failure of government governance mm. over many years. Because if they are using the locals, that means they are the nearest governments that the locals can see. Mm -hmm. And they have no choice. The robots will say, if you're, if, you're, if you're praying that your enemy, you should not eat the food of your enemy. Mm. But your friend refused to go to the kitchen. <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay, you pray we, that we, you we, don't want to eat his food. But the only food available for the locals are the one from the bandits. That's it, that's it. Uh, we'll come to that shortly. But let, 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 let me greet. Uh, Herbert is in a lorry. Herbert, good evening. Welcome. It's gone. We seem to have lost the contact. Uh, so that's the reality we face. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is when intel, intelligence is important. But the people... Nigerians have been traumatized to a point where they won't necessarily volunteer information. Precisely because you don't know in whose hand it will fall. Don't forget that there was a, a point in time that when they were caught, the guns with them were supposedly mm. from members of the military. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. So you know automatically that is beyond. It's now a criminal enterprise. And you know what criminality means when it comes to an enterprise. They don't pay taxes. It's free money, and they will now help them launder it. This is the same country that people were arrested in Dubai for laundering money. And the matter went away just like that. For funding Boko Haram. Because anybody who knows yeah. about public perception and public uh, control will tell you that should be the front burner until they get others. Yeah. But in two yeah. weeks, the thing was gone. We are back to inanities about which part of the country ruled for donkey as which one should rule. <laughs> Where people are dying every day, we don't really care. Emeka, it, it's no laughing matter, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a problem which we think we can contain, and, and yet we are still a long, long way from, from home. Yeah, well, unfortunately. Um, we, we, we keep turning we, the thing over in our mind. Yes, we need to, we need to, the strategies need to change. The it's unfortunate that for so long, mm. since 2009, how many governments have been contending with 
just one terrorist group, Boko Haram. Now it has gone, it has um, produced a swap. And then other variants around the country just practicing insurgency, just threatening the corporate existence Nigeria. of the nation. So the, the strategies have to, have to change. I, I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, I hope it is not uh, out of place to, bring, to draw a parallel between what we're discussing and what is happening in Lagos. You know? I, even want, I wanted to go there. You see, actually, the control of all these Okadas should be the job of the local government. Because the local governments, actually the municipal governments. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing is that politicians killed the local governments, killed and buried local governments. And so the state governments have taken over the functions of local government. That is why you see these things keep recurring. So, sorry, sorry. There's a Tony waiting to speak with us from London. Tony, good evening yes. to you. Yeah, um, yeah, evening. Hello. Welcome. Yes, I can, can, can you hear me? Go on. Yeah, uh, m my point is that uh, I hardly get you. This is my first time visiting. Go on, your, let's no, take advantage. Go on, you are here now. Your numbers keep changing. Why? No, no, no. It, 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 the numbers, but the numbers will be on the on the screen. So take advantage. You are on air now. Let's yes. let's go. Yeah, can I, can I be getting you with this number? Yes, Tony. You are on, and you always be on on this number. Are you done? Thank you. So, so yeah. You, you, when uh, students are on the street protesting as to strike, you send soldiers after them. You have different municipal disturbances, you send soldiers. You have serious uh, threats, external threats, you send soldiers. Peacekeeping, you send the same soldiers. What, so what exactly is the job of the Nigerian police? The civil defense, what are they really doing? What are they really doing? You see policemen mounting roadblocks, checkpoints, doing nothing. Let's send these people to the theater of war because they are trained. They are trained uh, ideally, the internal security, security of the country will be the business of the of police. The police, yes, but, they, uh, but, but also but the other side is that the police too, a lot of their functions have been taken over. That's why the job of the police, you have EAFCC, ICPC, and uh, all yeah, kinds the, of agencies now, now have, have been taken over. Seriously diluted. So... Yeah. What do you have remaining uh, well, of the you police? You know, when we were growing up, we had what they call the anti-riot policemen. Mm. They were, they were highly respected. Whose job was basically yeah. yes. to stop yes. riots. Yes. Yeah. They were cubed with tiagas, and uh, batons, for that. Yeah. Yeah. baskets, yeah. Uh, yeah. banners, and all of that. Yeah. But these yeah, days, no. you don't see those things. Don't also forget that in 1983, on that Sunday, there was, yes. there was an attempt to weaponize the police in such a manner that they can withstand even external security. Yeah. It was those the MP Yusuf who suggested it to go on and they said ah, that the police will get so powerful. No, it, so they even did it <laughs> till the later it, it, days no, of no, the, the, the police it was did the, it have was the APCs. The, it was the military that came in it for I forgot the name of the head of state there. No, they no, decided to uh, decimate Hawaii, that late, late uh, December decimated and so yeah. on. Well, that, so that's, the police officers are, like you said, some of the best in the world. They have awards to show for it. Yeah. GKB, that, that, that's working. for another day. Our time is tight. Uh, again, we share, we share um, your disappointment, uh, Governor Erufai, and uh, we wish you got speed. Yeah, let him do the needful. Let's do the, do the what needful you have to and, do. And, and, mm. and leave the rest to God. Yeah. You know. Okay.